I gotta clean this place up. Uh, I'm out here to get the things that I made before finished. You don't know what I'm talking about, so uh, bear with me while I get a couple of things put away here. I got my um, Danish oil that the Danes take exception to. They never heard of it before. <laughs> I don't know where the name originates. All I know what it is. And I'm going to be putting it on those things down there. I'm actually going to take those things and put them over on my workbench after I clean up my workbench so that I'll have room to put them. All right, junk from the woodware test that I knew that people wouldn't see that as definitive, but, but that wasn't the point. The point was I made an assertion before that having different wood would make a difference, but in the back of my mind I knew that really it couldn't make that much of a difference because you're talking but a lot of time that has to pass before wood will wear out. And I'm looking for I'm looking for something that I don't actually need to do right now. I'm just gonna take the pins out of this before I stab myself too much with it, but I'll stick it over there. Here I've got an old pot that actually has Varsol in it with a couple of paint brushes one I was using to stain my deck and then the other one is the one I was using with the Danish oil although I think I'm going to use a different one today here's the console table upper part that is still under construction Move that. I really got to take a full day out here and clean this all up so that I can get back to the things that I'm supposed to be doing which is first of all finishing that I've got a couple of videos left to do on that but what I'm doing now is something that I started I don't know about a week and a half ago maybe two weeks and that's the I don't really have, I have a name for it, but I don't want to say it. It's a, another wall art project, but it didn't start that way. <laughs> and I'll go into that as I progress here. But right now I got to get this cleaned up. So I, I don't need any more distractions. So beat it. Go away. Okay, workbench is clean. Not super clean, but good enough for what I got to do. Just say I need to clear some of this junk out of the way too and I gotta I gotta pick one here that I can do an actual just test on to see how this is gonna look um, I'll make it this one Okay, you're probably saying, what's the deal here, John? What exactly are you doing? See how easy that comes off when you use the two layers of plastic like that? That's amazing. I'll take this one off, and what I'll do with this one is just throw it away. Then I'll use that one on the inside and get a fresh one for the outside. Man, I'm a genius. No? <sighs> what I'm doing. This started out as another project and it turned into what I'm doing now. Uh, the project it started out as was the base for the Westeros table. I had a pretty neat idea to take one of my big uh, pieces of tree out there and cut the center out and leave, just leave the rim and use that as the base for the for the table and I just removed the bark and and uh, possibly carve a face in like the uh, trees on the show. But uh, when I was cutting it out, 
the first thing that happened was that it cracked apart. Mainly because that's very difficult to do. This has got a trunk chunk of wood, uh, hard maple that's pretty wet. And cutting out the center of it, it still weighs like 300 pounds for sure. And trying to get that ring off intact uh, was a problem. Mainly because it was there was a natural fissure there where the bark uh, grew in, I guess. And it was already split there. And then when I tried to do it, it split in half anyway, split in two pieces. And then I said to myself, oh, that's no problem. I'll just glue it back together after I get the bark off. And then I'm taking the bark off and it exposed a lot of interesting looking stuff underneath the bark. So I said to myself, is this really what you want to do with this? You want to make this a table base? Or is there something more interesting you can do with this? And then I got the idea to kind of make a... I guess you'd have, call, you'd have to call it kind of a wall sculpture. It, in my mind, I was looking at this wood and what it really looked like was driftwood. If you've ever seen driftwood in person, except it didn't have the great color that this has, but it had that really smooth uh, kind of weathered look to it. Um, so I had the idea to cut sections of it and then mount them on the wall in a line and have little space between them and then call the whole thing a drift. So that would be the name of the artwork <laughs> that it would be. Kind of lofty, I, I, I admit, but uh, I think it would look good. I was picturing it in my mind that it would look good, mainly because there are of that natural uh, break in it, that fissure, you could say, has some of the bark left on there. And when those two pieces go together, but not, not fully together, but, you know, an opening, they'll be like the center point of the thing. Uh, to illustrate that, I brought the two pieces that I was talking about over. Here you can see the bark on the inside. I didn't remove any of this. I left this as a feature. Uh, same thing on the other piece over here that matches up to it. Now it's pretty tricky to get these parts to kind of go together. You can see the way it was originally like that. But if I leave them spaced, Thusly, it will be kind of the focal point. But, um, so that's the idea. That was, it's unclear to me at this point whether this is going to be a mistake or not. I've laid the pieces out and they match up what I had in mind. But I'm not actually seeing them on the wall in my living room where they will eventually go. So part of it is I, I'm i seeing this color and this color is not right yet. Um, I already painted the ends. First of all, I painted them white. Immediately after I cut the ring out, I painted that white to stop it from drying out too much because that will make the cracks that were already there because this wood has been sitting out there for the past, uh, I don't know, eight months, 10 months, drying out. So cracks are already starting to form and I, you know, you can see some of those and I didn't want them to get any bigger and I didn't want new ones to form. So I've been very careful about how rapidly this dries out. I've been taking it outdoors and leaving it in the shade in the space between my uh, shop here and the house, there's an alleyway there that uh, is fully shaded, but the wind always, uh, you know, blows through there. Even when it's relatively calm, there's air moving through there. I don't know what it is, kind of a convection thing. Anyway, so I've been putting them out there, leaning them against the wall, letting the air circulate to slowly dry them out. Now I have a moisture meter, but I haven't taken a reading on any of them yet. Part of the problem is their varying thicknesses. Oh, I mean, when I cut it out, I tried to get it as close as I possibly could, but man, that was difficult to do, uh, especially manhandling 
that big piece of wood and trying to cut in there straight. So at this point, I have a lot of time invested into these, what are just chunks of wood. And <laughs> I really want to make sure that it turns out exactly the way I see it in my mind and I'll be happy with it. I'm not too concerned about the video, even though I, at this point, I think I have somewhere close to 200 clips uh, recorded for it. And that's the most clips I've ever recorded for a single video before. Okay, so onwards with the work. Enough of the chit chat. Um, like I say, I've got the ends coated with full strength polyurethane. I gave it two coats. First coat I gave it, so then I sanded it lightly and I gave it another coat. And that is there to block the escape of moisture from the ends. What I want to do now is get the fronts, this side over here, uh, with one coat of uh, the Danish oil, rubbing it in with the scotch Brite pad. What the scotch Brite pad will do is it will wipe away some of the stuff that's still on the surface. I spent an enormous amount of time cleaning this after I got the bark off because right underneath the bark there's this membrane that's kind of pulpy. So I had to get every scrap of that off, otherwise it'll be showing up as brown flax in there. The only problem is that I couldn't get it all off, so I'm hoping that, you know, by rubbing the, the uh, Danish oil in with a scotch Brite pad, it was supposed to be steel wool, but I'll have to settle for this. That'll take the rest of that off. Also, it'll, you know, open the surface up a little bit here to bring out a little bit more of the grain and the color. When you look at this closely, and this is what I'm hoping to get from the uh, piece, I guess you could say, <laughs> if I'm sounding uh, artsy here, is that you would look at this closely and you would examine all the places where there are little knobs sticking out here. It has a really great texture and look to it that I wanted to capture and preserve mostly. And I think this is the way to do it. So what I'm gonna do with this, just go over every inch of the surface with this Scotch Brite pad, and I notice that it is taking away some of the little flecks that are still there from the bark. But I really have to scrub hard to get it to do that. So I've got my paper towel here, and I'm wiping off the excess. I'm not wiping it completely dry though, like the footstool. I'm leaving enough behind that it makes a difference. I think you're probably getting the picture that this was a lot of work and I'll be very disappointed if it doesn't <laughs> if it doesn't look the way I want it to look. It actually feels kind of awkward using the tripod in here. Uh, I think focus up there and then reposition down here. Press the fucking record button. I've got one other decision to make with regards to the video. I already know that it's going to be silent. I'm not going to do any 
uh, narration. I really like telling the story with the video. Uh, if that sounds pretentious, go fuck yourself, okay? It's not. I like to show the video. I like to be able to make the video tell the story without any words. And I've always liked that. Mainly because I don't like doing a narration. I'm not natural doing it. So I try to avoid it. Talking to the camera like this, perfectly fine. I got no problem with that. But doing a recorded or a scripted narration, I just suck at that. So don't like to do them. Um, the decision I need to make is I've always wanted to do a reverse video where you start at the end of the project and you work your way towards the beginning. And I think that this may be a good candidate for that. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll edit it into blocks where I show a process. And then what I'll do is I'll rearrange those blocks backwards so that it starts at the end and works its way to the beginning, but showing it in blocks or in steps. And that way I'll have the freedom of reversing it if I want to or putting it back to the way it's supposed to be. But, or maybe I'll do both and I'll post the other one, the forward one, or the regular uh, direction one, on my red channel. Who knows? Might be interesting to have two, be able to watch both and see which one you prefer. And then John makes more money, of course. Okay, I got my paintbrush here, kept in the bag, inside the fridge, so it wouldn't harden up too much. And what I'm going to be doing is painting the backs of all these pieces, and I'll also have to repaint the end of that one. I'm not going to be doing the side that I just cleaned up, or the sides that I just cleaned up, mainly because I want to do that with the oil, uh, the Danish oil, so it doesn't look too heavy. Here on the back, I only want to give it maximum of two heavy coats, just so that it's, you know, sealed. So it really doesn't matter. Got my full strength polyurethane, my bag, and a skin formed right up on the underside of the bag, which is interesting. A uh, few people commented about the fact that the shopping bags are biodegradable now, but these sandwich bags work well. And something else that probably works even better are these rubber gloves. I did it on the uh, Danish oil after I spilled half of it on the floor right over the top of my workbench here and onto the floor, which was not good. Uh, I don't think this needs to be mixed. I'm not going to anyway. I'm just going to paint it on. Uh, this one here with all this cut out on the back here, this is the one with the hole through it for the branch. And this is where the bark grew in and then the new wood came in. And all this area inside here was filled with bugs <laughs> and dirt, uh, every kind of bug you can imagine. I had to cut this section out, of course, with the chainsaw. And then I had to wash this out really well. I got the hose and I ran it through here until everything flushed out. It's been probably a couple weeks or more since the last thing I filmed on this. And what I'm doing right now is I'm setting up my router to cut the recesses in the back of the pieces for, you know, the hanging system that I want to use. Basically, it's going to be a round hole that's uh, dovetailed on the inside, very much like a French cleat except uh, what will go on the wall is like almost like a cam that will interlock with that uh, dovetail and you'll be able to, or I'll be able to uh, adjust it. 
If you're wondering what the fuck is wrong with my voice, I got a very bad cold, and I really shouldn't be out here doing this right now, but I don't know. Just don't feel like sitting around. I'm sitting around and my back is getting sore. And I know it's better if I let myself heal up, but man. Anyway, so I'm trying to get this set up here. Uh, I got two bits for the router. One's the dovetail, one's the straight cutting. I'll do the straight cutting first and then I'll switch it out to the dovetail and that'll just dovetail around the edge. The, you know, I'm exaggerating the size of the hole here. It's actually probably gonna be, well, whatever my biggest hole size is, minus this bushing right here. I've got what is the shortest one right here, and I'll get laid down on this piece of foam, so I won't beat up the front while I'm doing this. And I'm starting to make this guide. And basically why I want the shortest one is because I want to have this hanging system up as high as possible. And I've lined this up with the piece already, and I've made a mark on there, and I'm gonna screw this piece on. And what that will do is it'll position that hole that I'm going to route in the back up towards the top. And I'm going to try to center that as best I can before I route the hole. The idea is that this hole will be routed in the back, or recess, I should say. And then this cam that I'm talking about, you'll be able to screw it onto the wall and then rotate the cam, and that will move the piece up and down, not by a huge amount. I'm thinking about probably like a quarter inch offset. And then just the fact that it's uh, interlocked with the dovetail and the friction that provides, plus the fact that it's pressed tight against the wall uh, across this entire back here, that'll keep it straight up and down so I won't have to worry about that. So what I need to do is screw this on here. I've already made a line that's square. The whole side, which almost broke my arm. <laughs> Funny how weak you get when you get a cold, man. It's crazy. Anyway, I can't find my impact driver, so I'm going to use the drill to dry these screws. It's going to be like the old days here. There's a clutch on these drills. Oh, I went into the backer. There's a clutch on these drills that are that's supposed to help you with with screwing, but I've never used those. I've always found those absolutely infuriating. <laughs> you drive the screw and you want to get the extra power, and then that thing is slipping. So what I'll do is I'll put it on a clutch setting of say five here, and it's stopping it. It's just annoying, so I don't use it. I'm not at all happy with how well the clamp was holding it, so instead I'm going to screw it right onto the back here with one inch screws, and that way I know it can't move. And then I'll use the clamp to actually hold it down to the workbench a bit better so it doesn't move around so much. Okay, I get the next one lined up here and the template screwed on. This is the first one that I just routed out. I have to do all the straight ones first and then I'll do the uh, dovetails in them all at the same time. I figure that's the best way rather than trying to change the bit and line it up all the time. And do it this way.
finished. I finished routing the pockets in all six pieces and now I've swapped out the bit for the dovetail and set that up and basically I only need to route the top part of this pocket up here, you know, the upside because that's the only part that's going to engage with the cam. What I did was I brought the pieces in and I set up this frame here to hold them up on the wall like I mentioned before just to get an idea of the spacing and the overall look of it and I have to confess that when I first put these up here I didn't like it and I was so bitterly disappointed at all the work I put in and I didn't like it but I decided instead of taking them down and throwing it on the burn pile to leave it up here and you know maybe I'll get used to it maybe I'll play with the spacing and whatnot and uh, see if I come to like it and I think I'm <laughs> I think I'm there I like it now it's less dramatic than I thought it would be mainly because of this size of the wall I guess that I've selected to put this this is my living room the back wall of it and I this is originally where I was going to put it <sighs> Except I kind of in my mind pictured it, pictured the pieces being larger on the wall. But I've taken a picture of this actually, and I've you know whited out this frame and looked at it close more closely. And like I said, I've uh, come to like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount it today. And to do that, I'm gonna take each piece down, and I've got this block or round piece of. But this is actually the uh, blank cut from the hole saw when I made the template for routing these out and I just sanded it down so it will fit in there snugly and I've also put a, a screw that's poking out so I'm just going to orient that straight up and down there and then take the piece and put it in place spaced where it's supposed to be and then I can just push it onto the wall and that screw, the tip of the screw, will make a mark where I can put an anchor and the anchors I'm going to be using are these plastic screw in ones. They'll so just, you know, drill a hole here and, and drive it in and these will be sufficient to hold up these pieces of wood no problem. I've got all the holes marked. I've taken the frame down, I've taken the pieces away, and now I'm going to drill quarter inch holes to drive in those anchors. I've got a masonry bit here. It doesn't have to be a masonry bit, but I don't want to destroy a good one, so. Alright, to set these anchors, you just use a regular screwdriver, Phillips, and drive them in until they're flush. So, and then I've made six of these angled round things here and drilled a hole offset to make it into a kind of cam. So, I'll drive those in, and they allow me to adjust the individual pieces up and down. Not by a huge amount, but probably by enough to make it so that I can level them up precisely the way I want them. And then the angled part of it here will actually hold the piece onto the wall. I'll just get the piece that goes here. I think this is it. And and like I said before, it allows me to rotate the piece and you know the friction of it between this and the wall will hold it in place. So it looks pretty good.
Okay, I did some adjustments here. The objective was to make it nice and straight across the bottom and then have that natural sweep up on top like I was talking about before. And it looks pretty good. And uh, standing back away from it now, uh, I like it a lot better. Uh, especially with the frame out of the way, now I can see exactly how it's going to look. I do have to get each individual piece down again and give them the final coat of uh, white bond or Danish oil just to clean them up a little bit because they're quite dusty right now because I, you know, I just took them in from machining out those holes in the back and put them up here in place. So a little, uh, I don't know, a little bit less finished than it really should be. So anyway, that's, that's it for this one. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I don't know how long this particular video is going to be. Because like I say, I've filmed it over the course of several weeks. So I don't know. We'll see. And I'll let you know in the future <laughs> if this is still around. Right now, I'm, I'm actually really liking it. So I got a feeling that it will be.